Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Emulator Review. I am your good friend, Jason Heine, sitting and kicking it with you on this fantabulous day. I hope you guys are all doing well out there, and I hope this video comes to you at a great time in your life. Hey, guess what? You know, I talk about a lot about game franchises, and boy, we have some franchises out there that are pretty large, right? A lot of games. I mean, I could be talking about the Mega Man franchise, could be talking about the Final Fantasy franchise, but no, 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 no. Let's break it down here. We have a franchise that's been around for quite some time as well. That's right, I'm talking about the Need for Speed franchise produced and created by Electronic Arts. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but this franchise to me has never gone unnoticed. I don't know, it just seems like it kind of gets shoved under the rug. I don't know if it's Electronic Arts just kind of shoveling these games back to back to back, year after year, and then we keep forgetting about all the older ones. But then again, I don't know. I mean, this franchise has seen a whole lot of different doors in its life, per se. It has gone from racing sim to arcadey to hot pursuit chasing. There's been all sorts of things, and I think Electronic Arts really has tried to figure out and uh, do what they want to do with the franchise. They wanted to experiment with all these different ideas to see what worked. This thing is cross-platform. It's on every single platform that I can think of. I think I don't even know that I can come up with uh, a console that the game isn't on. Maybe some handhelds, but really, other than that, the game is available worldwide on every single friggin' console, including PC. It's pretty great. So what I wanted to do is, yeah, okay, we've got all these Need for Speeds, but I wanted to break it down and talk about the original, the original Need for Speed, often called Road and Track Presents the Need for Speed because they partnered, Electronic Arts partnered with Road and Track to get together, talk about the vehicles. You see, when they were talking about this and creating the concept for this game, they didn't really have an intention to make it really an arcadey type racer. What they wanted to do is they wanted to make it part sim, part educational, but also they wanted to be true to form to the vehicles. They wanted it to sound like the vehicles. They wanted the vehicles to look the part. Even in the interior shots of the cars, it has the interiors, exactly. The dials, uh, the speedometer, the tag, everything. It looks exactly like the cars did in 1995. There are so many Need for Speed games. I'm gonna just break down the list briefly. Follow along here friends. Need for Speed, Road and Track, 1994. Need for Speed 2, 97. Need for Speed 3, Hot Pursuit, 98. Need for Speed High Stakes, Need for Speed Road Challenge in 1999. Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed and Porsche 2000 in 2000. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 in 2002. Need for Speed Underground, 2003. Underground 2 in 2004. Most Wanted, 2005. Carbon, 2006. Pro Street, 2007. Undercover, 2008. Need for Speed Shift in 2009. Need for Speed Nitro in 2009, uh, and Need for Speed World 2010, Hot Pursuit in 2010, Shift 2 Unleashed 2011, and Need for Speed The Run in 2011. So we're looking at, this is at least 20 deep right here, and then at the time of me recording this, who knows, in a year, two years, three years, we could see three, four, five more of them, so who knows? So with all that being said, this excellent review is gonna be over the Road and Track Presents Need for Speed, and I'm gonna be talking about the PlayStation 1 port and the Microsoft MS-DOS port that I have here. This game was developed by EA Canada, published by Electronic Arts, and released in 1994, originally for the 3DO. It was then later ported to MS-DOS in 1995. The PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn got their version in 1996, and then Microsoft MS-DOS got their port in 1997. <coughs> now, I'm not really sure how you guys wipe, but I'm gonna work my way back to front today and start with the oldest to the newest, which puts us on the Microsoft MS-DOS port came out in 1995. And then jumping right in here to the main menu, it's pretty bare to tell you the truth. Now I've played all the other ports and I, I originally played this on the 3DO and the menus are completely different than the MS-DOS, but it's kind of it's kind of interesting to see where they started out with it. So here we here we have the original main menu where you can select your computer opponent, select your vehicle, select your track, and then click on drive and away you go. It's that simple. Of course, you can go into options and do some different settings here like screen resolution. Look at that screen resolution, isn't that hilarious? Oh, how times change, right? <laughs> Put that on your flat screen LCD, baby. And this is really the beauty of running games on a PC, on the computer, is that you, know, you can select your different quality settings with here. So of course I make sure that my image quality is on high, 
the view distance, the draw distance is far, the car detail on high, and a horizon. See, you can tweak it. I mean, you can really turn this all the way down to look like utter garbage if your computer specs really weren't up to par. And one thing about it is that I remember when this came out, and all the critics said this game is fantastic, except for it demanded a very high-end machine at the time. Once we get back here to the main menu, you can select your vehicle, which you can have actually quite a few options of current vehicles for the time. You have the Acura NSX, Toyota Supra Turbo, the Porsche 911 Carrera, Corvette ZR1, Dodge Viper RT10, the Ferrari 512TR, Lamborghini Diablo VT, and the Mazda RX-7. And taking a look at the individual tracks, we have Alpine, Rusty Springs Raceway, Autumn Valley Speedway, Vertigo Ridge, City, <laughs> and the last one, Coastal. All right, so let's go right ahead and jump in here and check out some of the gameplay. So and as you can see, the game looks stunning for Microsoft DOS. Being inside the uh, Acura NSX here, you can see the gauges, the dash, CD player, everything looks exactly like it does in the car of that time. Doing a little head-to-head -head racing here. The objective is to get to the finish line that is a certain amount of miles away up there at the top right, 5.25 miles, it says up there. And uh, beat your opponent, not get run over and slow down by the AI, not getting a ticket. And of course you can hear you have a little beeping there, that's your radar detector when the cops get close by, it starts beeping faster to let you know they are nearby. And then once you pass them, sirens go off and they start chasing you. If you hit an opponent, wall, side, anything, or spin out, lose control, and the cop is near you, he will stop you and you will get a ticket. You have to watch out, because I believe it's two tickets, and then it's completely game over. So I just want to say here, on the DOS port, the game looks stunning. I think it's beautiful. It runs at a solid frame rate. Appears to be right around 60, maybe a little less. The draw distance is incredible. The textures are really nice, and the colors are extremely vivid, detailed. Really, really like the way it looks. I mean, yeah, the tack down there, it's not numbered, it's kind of irrelevant in that I'm sitting there in the red line for a long time, not changing the gears. And, you know, the top of the screen, your HUD there, and I'm only going to say this because I've played the other ports, is it's a little confusing. I mean, yeah, you have the gray time up there on top left, that shows you how fast you should do it, I believe. The yellow time there ticking next to it shows you what your current time is. The red is your speed. To the right of that are your gears. To the right of that is how long until you finish the level, and then of course the far right shows you your position. Which in essence, it all sounds like that works and is a great way to do it. Wait till I show you the PS1 and how it's laid out, and then you'll really see. But I love just going through here, cruising through, getting airborne. You know, the controls take a little getting used to. They're not real responsive. They're trying to simulate, you know, a real car here. So, you know, it's a, it's a thin line between arcadey and simulation. So, I think they did a really nice job. This is a fantastic port. Of course, this is really hard to get running on any modern machine. I'm sure you can emulate it through DOSBox or something like that. But uh, this is a fantastic game right here. Another really great feature that they added into this game is replays. Okay, so you could sit after the end of the race, you could sit down and watch your entire replay if you wish. They also have something called a highlight reel. Ooh, highlight reel. I know all about those. So what you can do here is you can just click on and it records and shows you just the highlights of when you crashed, wiped out, overtook a vehicle, ran from the cop, you know, made a clean getaway. What's nice is you can go in and do it full speed, half speed, or a quarter of the speed, and select all your different camera angles too. Bumper, sky, tail, all these different camera angles. It's quite incredible and actually very interesting and fun for a game of this nature. I mean, you ever find yourself playing games and saying, man, I wish they had replay. I find myself playing racing games all the time where I wish I could see what I did, something incredible. Well, and here you can, quite nice. 
All right, so moving right along here, of course, Electronic Arts Canada. In cooperation with Pioneer Productions, we have the need for speed for the PlayStation 1. This port was released a whole two years after its initial release on the 3DO and one year after the MS-DOS. They definitely had a little time to fine tune and tweak the game and I really think that this shows. Out of all the ports available on this, I really have to say I think this is the best one out there. Why? Well, just because it feels refined, it feels completed. It feels like all the little hiccups and missteps that they had on the original two are fixed completely in this one. And this is exactly what I mean here. I mean, check out this intro. We have two whole completely different intros that we haven't seen in the other two ports. Pretty nice. We are now treated to Dolby Digital Surround Sound, which is neat. And then getting into the game itself, you see that we have a completely reworked menu. And I always love to hit the options first because I like to figure out my controls, audio and video settings first like I do, so we're all good here. So then getting into single player, you have time trial, head to head, single race, and tournament mode. Checking out the tracks, we have the Rusty Springs, Autumn Valley, Vertigo Ridge, City, and Coastal. And as we look down here, what's new, you can already see is that you have different segments. Look at this. you have one, two, what, one, two, three different segments of each level. And you also have time of day options now. You can do morning, midday, or evening. And we can see here from the vehicle selection screen, it's all put together. Everything's condensed. You have pictures of the vehicle showing you at a glance now of the horsepower, top speed, price tag. You have your uh, transmission options, automatic manual. Then you come into car showcase. Now this was also on the MS-DOS and 3DO, but for some reason on my MS-DOS just kept crashing when I went into it. But you can select and go in and learn about the vehicles. They actually have commentary. Check this out. Italian style, beauty, speed, comfort, exclusivity. The Ferrari 512TR has it in droves. Able to play the roles of high-speed Grand Tour or sports car equally well, this Ferrari is not at all nervous or high-strung. Its 421 horsepower flat 12 is the epitome of tractability. And one look at those huge body side ducts lined with the strakes that have graced the Testarossa since 1984 make its mid-engine configuration readily apparent. See, this is exactly what I mean about it being educational. And this is the whole influence from road and track. Obviously, the car guys over there. So this is a really cool thing to see. You can go to different slides. You can see different aspects of the car. You can get different commentary on every vehicle. It's really cool, actually. Just shows you what their idea and concept was back in the day. Pretty sweet. And lastly, on top of that, if you want to check out, they actually made videos, little demo videos of each car with some stats and specs going on on the screen there. Pretty awesome. And that's definitely the influence of Road and Track. You can you can obviously tell. All right, so then get into the gameplay here. As we jump down, you can see... I mean, look at that game. I think it looks incredible. And I think that the HUD, the heads-up display here, is, is so much better. For one, we have a digital readout of your RPMs. You have a speed that's right there up front. You can see exactly where it is, what gear you're in, destinations in green, your time's up there. And now we have a little mini-map at the bottom left that shows you, your opponent, where the cops are. And then below that, in clean, clear, visible display, your position. I really like the way the heads-up display is, and I definitely prefer this style over the DOS version. And I must say, the game runs perfect on this PlayStation 2 that I'm running it on. I am playing on a Model 1 fat PlayStation 2 right now. The frame rate solid, everything looks great, and I have noticed two things. When I play this game on my PS1, the menus are a bit laggy when they shoot in and out. On the PlayStation 2, they're not at all. I don't think frame rate is an issue on the PS1 as opposed to the PS2, but still, it's just something I'd like to note. Kind of interesting. And I guess if you can get over the fact that the textures are degraded a bit here on the PlayStation, but either way, I think it looks fantastic. They're a bit more pixelated here, but if you can get over that, you really do have yourself one of the best ports right here. You're treated to all the fine whistles and bells that you get before, replays, highlight reels, 
and everything else that goes along with it. But with all great things, there has to be a few drawbacks, of course. And I'm going to talk about a few things that are on my mind. I just find it kind of interesting, actually. You know, most racing games, when you turn around and you drive the opposite direction that I know all of you do, the camera angle will usually switch around so you can see where you're going. Well, not in this game. I mean, the game's coded to not do that. The camera angle only goes one way. That's forward. So when you turn around, check it out. You get a shot at the front of the car and you get to drive backwards with the camera going in reverse. I found that out when I was a youngster and I always thought it was very interesting. I'd never seen that before. Of course, racing games that look like this were new at the time, so I guess it was kind of the norm. Another thing too, this is the biggest thing ever. The AI in this game are ridiculous. I mean, they're like swerving to try to take you out. I know they wanted to make the game difficult. I know they wanted to make it hard and challenging. But really, the draw distance is hard enough to see what's coming up. I mean, it looks like it's a little green and red dot way up there, and that's the vehicle coming at me. I try to swerve and miss, and all they do is they cut me off. They cut me off. I mean, look at this. This guy is even taking out another driver to try to take me out. I mean, this is like jihad, kamikaze stuff going on here. These guys are crazy. And I'm sure you're all probably wondering what happens when you do get pulled over a few times and get a ticket. Yes, I know. Don't worry, I'll show you. Your first offense, you get greeted by Officer Doofy here, hands you a nice ticket for speeding. But your second offense is a little bit different. You're just crying out for some rehabilitation, aren't you? I just feel, you feel like road rash, anyone? Feel a little road rashy here? <laughs> so guys, this has been my review of Need for Speed, presented by Road and & Track, and produced by Electronic Arts. This is a fantastic racing game, one of the best in my opinion. This introduced me and the world to a whole new genre of racing, with this futuristic 3D looking environments, realistic cars with facts, tests, knowledge bases, videos, this is quite a game, and way ahead of its time, and the birth of such a wonderful franchise. You have to pay respects to a game of this caliber. So guys, thanks for hanging out. I really hope you've enjoyed the review. Take care of yourselves. Keep it under 100. Peace out. You're just crying out for some rehabilitation, aren't you?